Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Mr. Farney Earth Science video. In this video, we're going to go through galaxy basics and talk very, very briefly about the Big Bang Theory. So the first series of videos were about stars, kind of their characteristics, their formation, their life cycles. In this one, we're going to go a little bigger. We're going to talk about galaxies, what they're all about, and then a little bit about maybe how the entire universe uh, plausibly began. So galaxies. What is a galaxy? These are huge gravitationally bound systems made up of different types of stars, interstellar gases and clouds like our nebula, plasma, and then something that we can't even see or and have very, very trouble detecting, something called dark matter, which is matter that does not emit or reflect enough EMR, or you know, that's like our electromagnetic spectrum radiation to be detected directly, um, but whose presence may be inferred from its gravitational effects on visible matter. That's what, what does that mean? It means we can't see it using light or electromagnetic waves, but we can tell that something's there because there is some inherent gravitational force acting upon it and the different objects around it. So even though we can't see it, we know it's there because there, because gravity. Gravity is playing a role in letting us know what dark matter is. A lot of current research going on with dark matter. It'll be very exciting to see what comes out over the next decade or two uh, about dark matter. So back to galaxies, they can typically contain somewhere between 10 million to 1 trillion with a T stars all orbiting some common center of gravity. And that there's evidence that supermassive black holes may exist at the center of many, if not all, galaxies. Because in order to have all of those stars orbiting this one center point, you need something with a massive gravitational pull to get it to orbit the way it does over such a large space. So the only thing that we can maybe, you know, postulate to have that type of gravity would be a black hole that is super massive. How many galaxies? Are there? There is probably more than 100 billion galaxies in what we refer to as our observable universe. So there's an, if there's one 10 million to a trillion stars in one galaxy and 100 billion galaxies in our observable universe, there is an insane number of stars that we're talking about here. There's this thing called intergalactic space, which is essentially, it's the space in galaxies between the different stars, the space between galaxies that is filled with plasma. That's what intergalactic space is, where we have this space between galaxies that is filled with just a plasma. Oh, I just clicked on the picture. There we go. Let's get back into this. So intergalactic space, space between galaxies filled with plasma. We also have what's known as our local group. So like how we had different ways of grouping stars, like our binary pairs, we had our star clusters, we have groups of galaxies. And this group of galaxies, it includes our own galaxy, the Milky Way, it's part of this local group. And this group contains over 30 galaxies with its gravitational center located somewhere between the Milky Way and Andromeda, which is another galaxy that's very close to us. So this is something that we should know too. Like binary star systems, we have two stars that kind of try to orbit around each other. You can have galaxies that try to orbit or circulate or interact with each other. It's how gravity is affecting each of these things. One galaxy is pulling another galaxy toward it. Another one is maybe making it move around it. So we have all this interaction of these 30 different galaxies in our local group that covers a hundred million light years worth of space. So local group, 30 galaxies, very, very big. There's four main different types of galaxies. We have spiral, a barred spiral, elliptical, and then irregular. Spiral galaxies are the most common type. This is where we live. About 77% of galaxies are a spiral type. The Milky Way is a spiral type galaxy. The arms of a spiral galaxy have a lot of gas and dust. And this is where we get new stars constantly forming, where we have these kind of pockets of gas and dust, our little nebula. And the bulge of a spiral galaxy is comprised of old red stars. Very little star formation occurs in those bulges. 
So the arms where we have a lot of formation, bulges, not so much. A barred spiral galaxy looks like a spiral galaxy, except it has this really long straight like line or bar, if you will, running through the middle of the galaxy. So if I flip back between these two slides, spiral galaxy kind of looks like a drain, like water going down a drain, whereas a bar, it looks like almost more like a hurricane or like a hurricane symbol because there's that really long bar of uh, like stars and dust and gas running through the center of this. So barred spiral looks like a spiral, but it has that really elongated middle portion. We can classify spiral galaxies based on like how tightly wound the arms of it are. So we can have type A, B, or C galaxies depending how tightly woven the arms are. And this is the same thing for barred spiral galaxies, depending how tightly woven those galaxies are. You can have A, you can have Bs, and you can have Cs. So we can classify these different galaxies and kind of like subclasses based on uh, their appearance. Spiral galaxies are the ma majority of galaxies. Elliptical ones, about 10% of galaxies that we see in our observable universe are elliptical. They have no spiral structure. And this is where you're going to find really kind of old stars. There's no gas present for new stars to form. So you're not making new stars in elliptical, in elliptical galaxies. It's just not going to happen. Like spiral, we can classify these based on how elliptical it is. Ones that are closer to kind of more of a circle shape, we call those E zeros. And then the more kind of stretched and elongated it is, we kind of increase the number that way, um, depending kind of how stretched or how flat they are. These are also just kind of examples of them too, elliptical ones. Uh, irregular galaxies, they're another type of ones. They're ones that don't really have necessarily a shape to it. Uh, and the way we get these type of galaxies, one hypothesis is when you have two galaxies collide or come close enough to each other, but their <coughs> gravities begin making them kind of intertwine and intermingle with them. Alternatively, irregular galaxies may be very, very young galaxies that haven't, you know, organized itself enough to become either elliptical or spiral. So it's one of those two directions uh, that an elliptical galaxy can form. Either two galaxies get close enough where they collide or things get really squirrely, or maybe the really, really young galaxies where they don't have an inherent shape yet. This is ours, the Milky Way galaxy. We live in this. This is just some really good background info about it. It's a spiral galaxy. Its diameter is 100,000 light years. That means to go from one side of the Milky Way to the other, traveling at the speed of light, it would take you 100,000 years. Really, really far. Uh, our sun revolves around the center of our, around the center of the galaxy at a speed of half a million miles an hour. That's really fast. 500,000 miles an hour. Yet it's still going to take 200 million years for it to go around one time around our galaxy. So that just shows, again, how massive it is. Here's kind of a above portion of the Milky Way and a side view. We're located on what's called the Orion arm. Kind of makes sense because we're, you know, we can see the Orion constellation. It's with, located within that arm. And we're located where that X is. So if we, I were to draw a diagram of this, you know, at the center is possibly my black hole, my supermassive black hole. The arm spiraling looks like our galaxy here rotates clockwise. And we're located on an outermost arm of it. So either the side view or the top view. You're probably going to need to draw a diagram of this on your test. So it'd be a good idea to maybe practice doing that in your notes. We have this thing called Hubble's Law, where the distance between galaxies are continually increasing. They're getting further away from each other, which gives us evidence that the universe is expanding. The further away a galaxy is, the faster it is receding from us on Earth. And we're able to use this to kind of estimate the size and the age of the universe. And because of that, we know the universe is somewhere around a little more than 13 billion years old. What was at the beginning is the Big Bang. Or the main idea of this is that the Big Bang theory is formulated by looking at couple different types of evidences and models of what our early universe might have been. So in order to kind of get to this idea of the Big Bang, we look at a couple different branches of science. One is cosmology, which is the study of nature. 
and kind of how it evolves over time. The most accurate model that we have for the formation of our universe is the Big Bang Theory. There are other models and other theories, but the Big Bang is our leading theory. That's why it's the Big Bang Theory, not the Big Bang Hypothesis, because it's the most commonly accepted one. And it says that the universe began as a single point and has been expanding ever since. This does not include an explosion in space. So even though it's called Big Bang, it doesn't mean that there was a massive explosion at the beginning. It just, we're talking expansion here from a single point. So that's kind of what we're dealing with here. We're talking about expansion, not necessarily an explosion. Now we have two possible theories with our universe. Either the universe will continue to expand and there's no end, it's just gonna keep expanding forever. Or uh, at some point, the stars and galaxies will stop moving away and then gravity will pull them back to the center again. And then another Big Bang will happen. So I kind of like the closed universe idea as far as what will happen in the end is that they'll expand out and then gravity will kind of slowly start working them back together. Uh, I kind of like that, almost like a boomerang. What evidence do we have to support that the Big Bang Theory happened? We have three things. We have redshift. So we have our Doppler effect, like we learned in a previous video. We have this cosmic background radiation that we have to know that, again, the, it's expanding. And then an abundance of very light elements in our universe. So hydrogen and helium, very, very light elements. These are three that we have, uh, three pieces of evidence that we have to show that our universe is expanding. So, and it supports the Big Bang Theory. That's a lot in this video. I want you to go back, take a look again. Uh, you want to definitely focus on galaxies, the different types of galaxies. There's four. Which one we live in, some basic information about the Milky Way, and that this idea of the Big Bang is our leading theory on the origin of the universe and kind of universal expansion. So if you have any questions for me, please go ahead and ask. If not, have a good rest of your day, and we'll check you out in the next video. Take care.